We now turn to our panel of witnesses, and we welcome each of them to the subcommittee this morning. I'll just say a brief word of introduction with respect to each. Ms. Fiona Alexander is Associate Administrator in the Office of International Affairs at the National Telecommunications and Information Administration. In that position, she is the primary liaison between the department and ICANN. Dr. Paul Toomey is President and Chief Executive Officer of ICANN. Mr. Kenneth Silva is Senior Vice President and Chief Technology Officer for VeriSign, the uh, registry for the dot-com uh, uh, top-level domain. Ms. Christine Jones is the General Counsel and Corporate Secretary for GoDaddy. Ms. Sarah Deutsch is Vice President and Associate General Counsel for Verizon Communications. And Dr. Thomas Leonard is President and Senior Fellow of the Technology Policy Institute. We welcome each of our witnesses, and without objection, your prepared written statement will be made a part of the record. We will welcome your oral summaries, and we would ask that in the interest of time and giving us plenty of opportunity to question you that you keep those oral summaries to approximately five minutes. Ms. Alexander, we'll be pleased to begin with you. Chairman Boucher, Ranking Member Stearns, and members of the committee, thank you for this opportunity to testify on behalf of the Ms. National Ms. Alexander, if you could pull that microphone yes, slightly closer, we can hear you better. Better? That's better, better thank okay. you. Chairman Boucher, Ranking Member Stearns, and members of the subcommittee, Thank you for this opportunity to testify on behalf of the National Telecommunications and Information Administration on issues related to the Internet's domain name and addressing system. The Internet has become a significant and important medium for conducting research, communicating with others, and conducting business. Given the Internet's importance in all of the fa these facets of daily life and the country's general economic well-being, it is essential that the Internet and its underlying infrastructure remain stable and secure. Consequently, the Department of Commerce takes very seriously its responsibilities with respect to the Internet DNS, including the joint project agreement between the Department and ICANN. ICANN was created out of an effort to bring more coordination and sustainability to the management of the Internet DNS as the Internet grew into a large-scale global network. A 1997 executive memorandum directed the Secretary of Commerce to privatize the Internet DNS in a manner that increases competition and facilitates international participation in its management. In June 1998, the department issued a statement of policy on the privatization of the Internet DNS and concluded that concluded that the core functions should be primarily performed through private sector management. ICANN was formed by private sector interests for this purpose, and in the fall of 1998, the Department of Commerce entered into a Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU, with ICANN. The MOU did not simply turn over management of the DNS to ICANN. Rather, the purpose of this agreement was to design, develop, and test mechanisms, methods, and procedures to ensure that the private sector has the capability and resources to assume important responsibilities related to the technical coordination and management of the DNS. This agreement does not give the Department of Commerce the ability to exercise oversight in the traditional context of regulation, and we play no role in the internal governance or day-to-day -day operations of ICAM. Since 1998, the MOU has evolved through several iterations and revisions as ICANN tested these principles, learned valuable lessons, and matured as an organization. In 2006, NTA and ICANN signed a joint project agreement extending the current MOU for three more years until September 30th of this year. In anticipation of the September 30th expiration of the JPA, NTA released a notice of inquiry on April 24th seeking comments regarding the progress of the transition, as well as the model of private sector leadership and bottom-up policy development which ICANN represents. The comment process for the do this docket closes on Monday, June 8th. The Department's commitment to preserving the security and stability of the Internet DNS and the public record developed as a result of this comment process will inform any decision about the JPA's future. It is important to note, however, that regardless of whether the JPA is terminated, modified, or extended, the Department, through NTIA, will continue to be an active participant in ICANN by representing the United States Government and ICANN's Governmental Advisory Committee, and by filing, filing comments, as appropriate, in ICANN's various public consultation processes. In addition, the Department's relationship with ICANN will continue, as ICANN currently performs the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority functions under contract to the Department. In addition to important institutional confidence issues associated with the JPA, the Department is actively engaged in discussions with stakeholders related to the introduction of new generic top-level domain names, or GTLDs. 
The Department acknowledges that the introduction of new GTLDs has been a long-standing goal of the JPA relationship and the subject of ongoing co public consultation process at ICAM. The Department, in coordination with an interagency group, has in fact filed public comments in this consultation, asking if the threshold question of whether the potential consumer benefits outweigh the potential costs as a result of this exercise and has had been adequately addressed and determined, and recommending further economic study of the issue as called for by the ICANN Board. The Department also identified a series of initial items that needed to be resolved prior to moving forward, including expanding the marketplace before effective and meaningful tools are in place to protect consumers and brand owners, as well as the need to preserve the security and stability of the DNS. The Department believes it is critical to keep in mind the core principle, as articulated in the very first MOU, of the need to manage the Internet DNS in a manner that permits market mechanisms to support competition and consumer choice so that lower costs are realized, innovation is promoted, and user choice and satisfaction are enhanced. Lastly, I would like to take this opportunity to update the Committee on our efforts to improve the security of the DNS. I'm happy to report that NTIA and its root zone management partners, ICANN and VeriSign, recently reached agreement to move forward with an interim approach to the deployment of a security technology known as Domain Name System Security Extensions, or DNSSEC, at the root zone level. This action is an important step toward protecting the integrity of DNS data and mitigating attacks such as cache poisoning and other data modification threats. Given the importance of the Internet as a global medium to support economic growth and innovation, Continuing to preserve the security and stability of the Internet DNS will guide any decisions that the Department of Commerce makes with respect to its future relationship with ICAM. NTA looks forward to working with you, members of the committee, and the Congress on this important issue as the September 30, 2009 JP expiration date approaches. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman, for this opportunity to testify this morning. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Ms. Alexander. Dr. Toomey. Thank you, Chairman Boucher. Uh, Ranking Member Stearns and esteemed members of the committee, thank you for this opportunity to appear before you today and to speak about both the Joint Project Agreement conclusion and new generic top-level domains. The Joint Project Agreement Memorandum of Understanding process has helped to grow ICANN to be a remarkable success story. The unique US government ICANN relationship has been, is, and will continue to be critically important to ICANN's success. The original Memorandum of Understanding used the word test when it was commenced almost 11 years ago. It was a test of whether a multi-stakeholder, private sector-led, California-based not-for-profit corporation could perform a narrow but crucial technical coordination function. After those 11 years, ICANN is a successful US-based organization with global support and participation. It has been key to supporting a single, interoperable internet on which 1.5 billion rely. In simple terms, it works. It has passed the test. Like other organizations, it must continually improve itself. But unlike many, this organization has continual improvement written into its bylaws. It also has an assertive community that keeps driving us to improve and will never allow us to stop striving for the best that we can be. We're not seeking less accountability to this multi-stakeholder community. We want more. The question at hand is how to ensure that what works is made permanent. One thing the Joint Project Agreement is clearly not is an oversight mechanism. And Ms. Alexander has just pointed out again that the Department of Commerce has consistently said that the JPA is not an oversight agreement. Chairman Boucher, you made the point in your introductions about the IANA contract, the procurement contract. This is the key instrument for oversight from the United States government. And I think you already we have potentially some misapprehensions about the difference between the Joint Project Agreement and the IANA contract is something we should explore. What we've been working together on for 11 years with advice from the United States government is a model all about private sector, bottom-up partnership with guidance from government. This is the time to have confidence to state this model works. Any new instrument, no matter how temporary, implicitly says that we, the United States government and ICANN don't have the confidence in that model. That will cause the international community to continue to look for alternatives. Indeed, with the mere speculation as to the possibility of renewal, they already are. If the US does not have the confidence in a private sector-led model, we should not expect other governments to have confidence in the model. If we continue to question the private sector-led community's ability to lead itself through the ICANN model, we should expect ongoing challenges and alternatives from others. 
a hypothetical eighth temporary agreement would suggest that the basic principles are open to debate. Across the global technical, registry and governments community, the question I get posed regularly is, does the United States government agree with and have confidence in the private sector led model? If the answer is yes, still yes, then let's confirm that and enshrine it. A more permanent approach that enshrines what, enshrines what is working is vital. As the JPA concludes, the Department of Commerce and ICANN should use that opportunity to commit ICANN to retain a narrow mission, remain based in the United States, remain a not-for-profit, remain an independent organisation as has been for almost 11 years, remain private sector multi-stakeholder led with international support, remain committed to continuous improvement, reinforcing that they are and a contract is the source of oversight where responsibility for the global coordination of the DNS route, IP addressing and other resources is found. None of these should rely on any temporary agreement. And being a California-based organisation ensures ICANN is subject to congressional oversight and US legal process. Let me speak briefly to the issues of generic top-level domains, that portion of an internet address that is to the right of the dot, such as .com or .org. Currently, there are 21 GTLDs. ICANN is currently deciding how to lift that artificial limit. There are crucial concerns about trademark and intellectual property protections once the expansion of GTLDs begins, if that's decided. We've heard those concerns and we are acting to fix them. The ICANN board has invited those who have voiced concern to give us solutions before we open up the application process. We have already, re already received the recommendations. We're focusing on other concerns as well to do with malicious behavior, security and demand. And I can ensure members of the committee that we will not move forward with any progress in implementation until we have addressed these issues. We will get it right, we will not rush the answer. We've often asked why are we expanding the top level domain space? First, we were asked to by the community and the United States government. It was called for in the white paper that foreshadowed ICANN and it is in the JPA. Second, there is demand, geographic names like dot NYC dot and dot Berlin are being proposed along with others like dot sport, dot eco and dot green. Finally, billions of non-English speakers want to see top level domains look like their language. It is not ICANN's role to set artificial and arbitrary limits on innovation and community use of for public resource. Simply, competition in the domain space is embedded in our values and our bind laws. So in conclusion, it's no surprise that the ICANN model is producing opportunities for choice, commerce and individual expression, and doing so while being attendant to our core mission, security and stability. The United States government has imbued these values into the ICANN model, and ICANN is made all the stronger for that. Thank you for inviting me, and I'd look happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Toomey. Mr. Silva. Good morning, Chairman Boucher. Uh, Ranking Member Stearns and other distinguished members of the subcommittee. My name is Ken Silva, and I serve as the Chief Technology Officer for Verisign. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. VeriSign operates digital infrastructure that enables and protects billions of interactions um, every day across the world's voice and data networks. The company is headquartered in Mountain View, California. We have additional offices in Virginia, Delaware, and Massachusetts. Because our responsibility is global, we're also in 30 different countries. At a time of economic challenges and uncertainty, it would be easy to focus on the many pressing near-term issues that affect our nation. But it is critical that we also focus on the Internet because the infrastructure is not only integral to the economic recovery of our country, but our national security as well. As the operator of the .com and .net domain registries, as well as a steward for two of the 13 root servers that serve as the nerve center of the Internet, VeriSign understands what's at stake. Over the last 10 years, VeriSign has operated its infrastructure with 100 percent uptime. In other words, the systems that ensure the Internet is functional have never gone down. But the Internet is not a static system. It's a dynamic network of networks that continues to change. It's growing dramatically overseas, raising questions about its future governance and the role of uh, nations who, share, who do not share our values about freedom of expression, content, and commerce. It is increasingly relied upon by citizens, businesses, organizations, and governments, raising questions about whether it can, can, can continue to scale to meet the needs of over 2 billion users in the future. It is a target of attacks that expand exponentially in volume, scope, and sophistication, raising questions about whether enough is being done to protect those critical networks that serve as the lifeline for commerce and communications. Recent incidents in China, India, Pakistan, and Estonia underscore that, impor that importance. 
I would like to address three challenges in my testimony. Internet governance, scaling of the Internet, securing the Internet. With respect to Internet governance, when it became clear that the Internet would have a profound impact on every facet of society, the Clinton administration took the lead in establishing ICANN to serve as the technical coordinating body. The Department of Commerce was given the task of helping guide ICANN and provide a governmental backstop. We must consider how to ensure that the Internet and the community that guides it are insulated as much as possible from domestic political pressures or the goals of those in the world who want to restrict what has made the Internet so dynamic, namely its innovative force and capacity to create businesses and jobs. With that, we look forward to the outcome of the discussions between ICANN and the Department of Commerce over the JPA, particularly as it relates to its impact on the security and stability of the Internet and its responsible stewardship. From our point of view, while ICANN has continued to make progress in certain areas, the basic circumstances giving rise to widespread community concerns over an expiration of the JPA remain largely unanswered. The overall goal in this process must be the strengthening of the security and stability of the Internet. With respect to scaling the Internet, because .com and .net never go down, users and even some companies who rely on it for their business model take it for granted. But VeriSign, other private sector players, and government cannot. We must continually invest and work to improve in its capacity. To keep up with the demand, VeriSign systems that manage .com and .net traffic can now handle more than 10,000 times the query volume that they could handle in 2000. To put that in perspective, that increase is about 600 times greater than Moore's Law, the theory that computing power doubles every 18 months. VeriSign systems handle more than 50 billion queries a day, and that's a 67 percent increase in just two years. Our investments include increasing capacity to support up to 4 trillion queries per day. We all know that the Internet that we use today is far different than it was 10 years ago, and we know that 10 years from now it will be dramatically different than it is today. That's why VeriSign is continually investing and in looking into strengthening that infrastructure that we all rely upon. With respect to securing the Internet, we are pleased that President Obama's cybersecurity czar will sit at the National Economic Council and the National Security Council as it under underscores the threat that cybersecurity attacks pose to our nation. As CTO, I've had to identify and manage attacks every day. Cyber criminals cleverly manipulate the Internet's advances, and the increased bandwidth and computing power available to them literally gives hackers more ammunition to utilize against the infrastructure. There are many issues that we must address as an Internet community. We must continue to invest and deploy in infrastructure upgrades such as DNSSEC and IP version 6 in a way that is least disruptive to Internet users, developers, businesses, and governments. We must continue to work together to invest and develop in the infrastructure so that it can continue its role as a platform for commerce and communications. I know that VeriSign, ICANN, and the rest of the Internet community will work diligently to ensure that the infrastructure remains reliable and secure. I thank you very much for your time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Silva. Ms. Jones. Ranking Member Stearns and members of the committee, I'm Christine Jones. I'm from GoDaddy. At the outset, I'd like to thank you, Chairman Boucher, for all of your work and the committee's work and for holding this hearing. Uh, we're happy to be here with ICANN and VeriSign. Uh, we're ICANN's largest registrar benefactor and VeriSign's largest customer, so we're always happy to participate with them. As the world's largest registrar, GoDaddy works daily with ICANN in its role as the coordinating body for the Internet. We believe it is essential for world commerce, as well as the security and the stability of the Internet, that the relationship between the NTIA and ICANN be continued, along with appropriate improvements in accountability, transparency, and democracy in governing principles. Continuing the JPA between ICANN and the NTIA will not only provide the framework for ensuring a continued focus on Internet security and stability issues, but will pre prevent ICANN from vulnerability to capture by another government, international organization, or business that does not have an open, secure, and stable Internet as its top priority. On the renewal of the JPA, the DNS white paper first published back in 1998 articulated that principles of accountability, competition, private bottom-up coordination, and representation are necessary for guiding the transition to a private sector management of Internet DNS. We believe those principles, even 11 years later, remain relevant. ICANN has made great progress toward achieving some, but not all, of these goals. Specifically, ICANN has not yet achieved competition, nor the private bottom-up coordination and representation called for in the ICANN bylaws. We believe the renewed JPA 
must be revised to include openness and transparency as overall guiding principles if we're ever to see an effective transition of internet DNS management to the private sector through ICANN. And of course, we would be happy to be involved in the process of determining appropriate revisions to the JPA if, if such assistance would be helpful. I want to talk about the extension of the JPA that uh, you mentioned, Mr. Chairman, for a minute. I, I want to reiterate, we are in favor of renewal of the JPA between ICANN and the NTIA for a multitude of reasons, not the least of which are a failure to accomplish its mission and abide by its stated core values. We believe ICANN will, will benefit from continued relationship. But we're aware that both VeriSign's ex parte letter and the recent letter uh, from Senators Nelson and Snow mentioned considering a one-year extension of the current JPA. If that arrangement would provide time to consider new or additional terms of a renewed JPA, then we would support such an extension as well. On the new GTLDs, we're not opposed, GoDaddy is not opposed to the concept of introducing new GTLDs. In fact, as Mr. Toomey said, the community has been calling for that for quite some time. But we have taken exception to the methodology by which they've been introduced. Loud voices from both the intellectual property community and the registrant community have been virtually ignored in this process. And ICANN can't seem to establish a guideline by which the new GTLDs will be, will be prechosen. In the interest of time, I'm going to defer to the, the IP expert on this panel to talk about GTLDs, but I'd love to get back to this if anybody asks questions on it. I want to focus on security and stability, because like all of us at this table and in this room, GoDaddy believes that security and stability of the Internet is vital. Indeed, we devote a considerable amount of time and resources to working with law enforcement on preserving the integrity and safety of the Internet. By quickly closing down websites and domain names engaged in illegal activities, we work with law enforcement agencies at all levels and routinely insist in a wide variety of criminal and civil investigations. And like our friends at VeriSign, we respond to and fight cyber attacks on our hosting, email, and domain name systems every single day. I personally, and this company in general, have made it a high priority to use our position as the world's largest registrar to make the internet a better and safer place. And we could not agree more with President Obama's decision to make cybersecurity and internet privacy issues a top priority in his administration. As he said, as the President said on Friday, America's economic prosperity in the 21st century will, be de will depend on cybersecurity. This is also a matter of public safety and national security. It's now clear the cyber threat is one of the most serious economic and national security challenges we face as a nation. We wholeheartedly agree. So thank you again, Mr. Chairman, for holding this hearing. We are in support, again, of the extension of the JPA. I would be happy to answer any questions for you or other members of the panel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Jones. Uh, Ms. Deutsch, we'll be happy to hear from you. Yes, Chairman Boucher, Ranking Member Stearns, and member of, members of the subcommittee. Thanks for the opportunity to participate in this important hearing addressing issues related to ICANN. Verizon supports ICANN. We wish to see it succeed as an independent and accountable model of private sector leadership. ICANN must be given the time and support it needs to make that smooth transition. My focus today is on ICANN's plans to expand the existing domain name space. ICANN plans to accept as many as 500 initial applications for new generic top-level domains or GTLDs. I will refer to GTLD simply as names. In the future, there may be unlimited number of new names. Future names could include anything one could imagine, from .bank to .health to .congress. ICANN financially benefits from this expansion. It will bring in more than $90 million from the initial round of applications alone. It will also collect ongoing fees of $75,000 per applicant uh, from annual renewals of each new name and it collects a 25 cent transaction fee from every domain name registered. As a result, however, businesses and consumers will face higher costs. This isn't very helpful in the current economic climate. Hundreds of diverse parties, including consumer groups, business organizations, trademark owners, and internet security experts have raised concern. ICANN has acknowledged the many concerns, but it has not adequately addressed them. Nevertheless, it plans to begin accepting applications for the new TLDs starting in early 2010. 
Verizon believes there are four fundamental concerns that ICANN needs to address fully before commencing any introduction of new TLDs. First, ICANN must complete an impartial and comprehensive economic study of the domain name marketplace. That study must explore whether there is an, even a need for so many new names in the first place. ICANN's board supported that study in 2007, yet it was never undertaken. Second, ICANN must ensure that consumers are adequately protected from online confusion and fraud. If, as predicted, there are more than 1,000 new names in the next three years, consumers will be the victims of more online confusion, more fraud, and more malicious activity. Consumers already have difficulty today finding the legitimate websites they want to reach. So consumers must be confident when they go to Verizon.phone, for example, that they've reached an authorized Verizon website versus one set up by a cyber squatter or an international phishing scam. Third, ICANN's rapid expansion may be at odds with its responsibility to increase the long-term safety and stability of the domain name system. ICANN may not have the ability to manage such a rapid expansion. Fourth, trademark and brand protection remain a critical concern. Trademark protection, of course, is directly tied con to consumer protection. Trademarks help consumers reach the websites and brands they know and trust. When users go online, however, they can easily be confused or diverted. And unfortunately, brands like Verizon, household brands, have been targets for cyber squatters. Cyber squatters have registered tens of thousands of variations of our trademarks uh, over the past few years. And here's a little stack. You need to know that many of these cyber squatters are ICANN accredited registrars. They've set up large-scale operations earning millions of dollars a year from their illegal activities. To protect our customers, we've brought many high-profile lawsuits against ICANN registrars in recent years. ICANN's registrars contractually agree to comply with all laws, yet we have observed little, if any, enforcement by ICANN against registrars who are found to violate anti-cyber squatting laws. We are very pleased that ICANN acknowledge the concerns raised by trademark owners by convening a small group of experts to offer possible solutions to address cyber squatting in an expanding GTLD space. We urge ICANN to adopt all these proposals as a package and continue to work with trademark owners on improving them. Verizon has specific ideas for such improvements as discussed in our written statement. In sum, any new TLD rollout must be delayed until all threshold concerns are fully addressed. ICANN should proceed slowly and cautiously in expanding the domain name space to protect the internet and its users. Finally, one note on the JPA. Numerous thoughtful suggestions have been made to improve ICANN processes while still preserving the model of private sector leadership. It is important to allow sufficient time to consider and implement these suggestions as well. We commend the subcommittee for addressing this important subject. Thanks again for the opportunity to testify. Thank you very much, Ms. Deutsch. Dr. Leonard. Uh, thank you, Chairman, Chairman Boucher, Ranking Member Stern. And Dr. Leonard, if you could turn on your microphone and move it over, that would help us hear you. Thank you, uh, Chairman Boucher, Ranking Member Stearns, and members of the subcommittee. Uh, my name is Thomas Leonard, and I'm President and Senior Fellow at the Technology Policy Institute. TPI is a nonpartisan, nonprofit think tank that focuses on the economics of innovation, technical change, and related regulation in the United States and around the world. I appreciate the opportunity to, pre to present my views uh, on ICANN. The expiration of the JPA this September provides a much needed opportunity for a thorough evaluation of the structure, governance, and mission of ICANN, and the subcommittee's examination of these issues is very important. Uh, one of those issues is ICANN's lack of uh, accountability, which is a recurring issue, and it's, which is an issue that uh, we recently addressed in a, uh, in a study that was published by TPI uh, that I co-authored with uh, Professor Lawrence White uh, of, the N of the NYU uh, Stern School of Business. The problem of the lack of accountability is not really is not an indictment of uh, ICANN's staff or leadership. It's simply a function of ICANN's institutional design. Uh, it's non-corporate corporation status combined with the way it's funded and, government, and governed. ICANN's uh, customers have nowhere else to go. Its board members are not answerable to any shareholders. And its decisions can't be appealed to any court in the way that regulatory, regulatory decisions in the US routinely are. 
ICANN's funders, the registries and the registrars, can't stop funding out ICANN without going out of business themselves. To study ways in which ICANN could become more accountable, we examined the structures of a number of organizations that perform similar coordination and standard setting functions. Uh, we learned a couple of things. First, none of the organizations uh, we considered operates with the independence that ICANN enjoys, even under the current nominal oversight by the Department of Commerce. In addition, virtually all of these other organizations are governed by their direct users, thereby building accountability into their structures. We believe this would be a good model for ICANN as well. The registries and the registrars have a strong incentive to, to assure that ICANN fulfills its responsibilities of managing the, do, the, the domain name system efficiently, and this is in the interest of the businesses and the consumers who are the Internet's end users. We recognize that this proposal may be viewed as radical, but it has already served to stimulate a discussion of ICANN governance issues that otherwise might not have taken place. Our study also addressed ICANN's mission. ICANN's scope should be clearly delineated. It should view closely to the technical functions in administering the domain name system. ICANN also, we believe, should have a clear mission of encouraging competition and a minimal role as a regulator. This means allowing relatively free entry into the market for, G for GTLDs in order to bring the benefits of competition to consumers and as we've heard, ICANN is moving in that direction uh, currently. But as part of this, in order for the, and really for the free entry of GL, GTLDs to work well, protections for incumbent domain name holders must be strengthened so that they are not subject to nuisance or ransom demands from, from new registries. There needs to be a thorough examination of how this should be done and who should do it. As was uh, alluded to, ICANN is, is uh, doing that now. But ICANN is not particularly well equipped to be a regulator and probably not uh, particularly well equipped to be an adjudicator of intellectual property disputes. Issues as important and complex as these merit a, th a thorough evaluation, which probably cannot be completed by September. Therefore, we believe that the agreement with the Department of Commerce should be extended in some form beyond its current expiration date while reforms are being considered and hopefully uh, becoming established. Reforming ICANN in a way that makes it truly accountable and clearly defines its scope of operations will ultimately make it feasible to end the JPA and more importantly ensure a vibrant, innovative and competitive internet uh, for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, Dr. Leonard. Thanks to all of the witnesses for your informative comments this morning.